Dear friends, just a few words for you to think about this afternoon. About the vaccine and the politics. Dear friends, everybody is running around on YouTube searching for data to try and decide who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth. To try and decide whether the vaccine is safe or not. To try and decide the safest way to navigate through life in this critical time. Dear friends, may I suggest that for the Christian, this is not really the right approach. Dear friends, God loves us. He doesn't want us to be filled with fear. And moreover, we don't have to be responsible for picking the safest approach. Dear friends, Jesus can protect us from everything and anything. Dear friends, he can protect us from the vaccine just as easily as he can protect us from the COVID. So therefore, it, in reality, it doesn't matter whether you take the vaccine or not. What really matters is your attitude towards Jesus. Are you living for him? Are you putting him first in your life? Are you dealing with sin? Are you seeking his forgiveness and fellowship? Are you seeking to be led by the Lord in all the choices of your life? He will give you a personal recommendation concerning whether you should have the vaccine or not. And his recommendation may be different. You're sure to meet other Christians who say, the Lord told me this or that. Dear Christians, please do not think that the Lord is going to speak to all of his children the same way, even about the same matter because they don't all think the same and we all have lessons to learn in life. Lessons. It is up to God to teach us. So whether we take the vaccine or we don't take the vaccine, God is able to protect and deliver us. It's all about our heart issue towards God and whether we really follow his leading in this, that, or any of the other circumstances in life where we have to make a decision. Now, dear friends, let us take a look at the politics. The American people are divided. The news networks are divided. The administration that's currently in power is trying to be exactly the opposite of the one that was there before. It's like chalk and cheese, the two administrations. And both of them have their faults. Donald Trump was not perfect. He did a lot of good things in his time in office. But he was not perfect. He had an ego complex. He certainly told lies and he wasn't a Christian even though he was quite willing to listen to them and formulate policies in their interests. Dear friends, what we have now is a godless administration. They claim to be in, in doing policies in the interests of everybody you can't actually please everybody. It's impossible. How can you please the world, the American people, and everybody, even within the American people themselves? There are communities that think one way and want one thing, and there are communities that think another way and want something. What is really the most distressing aspect of this administration is not their apparent concern for other people, whether it's the Mexicans crossing the border 
or the Afghans coming into America, what is their attitude towards God? They don't acknowledge God. They want a plur plurality of everything. They don't even acknowledge morality. Embrace ideologies and lifestyles that are not supported by the Word of God. As a matter of fact, fundamental Christians are the most hated people on the planet. They keep referring to white evangelicals. Dear friends, all evangelicals are not white. Neither are all evangelicals of the same doctrine. Dear friends, the Bible sets forth a clear path is there in the Bible for all to see. Love for God, a people that love and serve God. And that is the farthest thing from the political camp. People have accused the Republicans of giving name service to it, but not doing it in reality. But clearly the Biden administration is not about doing it either. Dear friends, I don't know why logical, rational thinking people cannot see what has actually happened in the last couple of years. Their minds are blinded and confused by the fear fear of COVID, fear of the future. Their minds are distracted from thinking rationally about their very existence on planet Earth. And while their minds are distracted from thinking of the weightier matters of spirituality and of the very meaning of life and the existence that we have and giving glory and praise to the Creator, they can't see that revelation is being fulfilled right before their very eyes. The first thing you realize is that every single church that God addresses in chapter 1 to 3, the seven churches that are mentioned, every one of them has some sort of condemnation. Some of them have praise for this and condemnation for that. Isn't that the nature of what we would expect from God? God says the people that he loves, he chastens. We are not perfect. Some of us may know our sins. Some of us may be oblivious and some of us may choose to ignore. But no human on this planet is righteous. No, not one. Our only righteousness comes from Christ and from Christ alone. But as we look around from the light of what is revealed in the Bible to what is actually going on in the world, we see everything else but what Christ-likeness looks like. Even in the churches, even in the Christian people, we see the same kind of selfishness, self-preservation, and self-obsession that we find in the worldly people. Not trusting and relying on Christ and seeking His will, His guidance, and His glory. Humility and uh, meekness that was praised by God, we find the exact opposite in people. We find proud, arrogant people. Paul exclaims to the early church, why don't you allow yourself to be defrauded? Why don't you rather take wrong? But you do wrong and that to those your brethren. This is in the context of brother going to law against brother and that before the court of the unbelievers. It was going on in Paul's day while he was still alive. 
and today this self-seeking has not disappeared from large Christian organizations and they're setting no example to the world whatsoever. Dear friends, don't let that be you. Dear friends, nobody wants to be defrauded. Nobody wants to be meek and mild. Nobody wants to take wrong. Nobody wants to be a doormat for everybody in sight. But dear friends, commit it all to God because vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will repay. If your enemy offend you, feed him and clothe him, and in so doing you will heap coals of fire upon his head. Dear friends, make, make up your mind today to serve Christ and him alone. Make up your mind to go to God in prayer and humility and find out what he would have you to do. And check the guidance you get against the Bible. There is so much that's there in the Bible. God will never lead people to do something that's contrary to what he has prescribed in his word. This is why it's so important to read his word. Very often he will speak to you directly when you're reading his word. Dear friends, my appeal to you today, this is your time to change. Dear friends, Whatever your political persuasion, whatever your favorite news network, whatever you're feeling about the coronavirus, dear friends, understand that this is all worldly stuff. And uh, the business that God would have us to be about is to calming the fears of people and encouraging them in the Lord. Will you do that today? Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.